Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are going to make the most incredible pepper jam. It's so good. Now the best part about this is if you are not into heat, if you're sensitive to heat, you can make this so it has very, very little. If you really like some heat, you can kick it up and you can add a little bit more to it. It is gorgeous in the jar. I call this festival jam, okay? It just looks like a party in a jar and it is fantastic for gift giving. So if you're looking to make gifts for this upcoming holiday season, this jam is gonna be your jam. Let's get started. To start off with, I have uh, yellow, orange, and red peppers. I have some peppers from our garden. Don't ask me. These are obviously jalapenos. The other ones, I honest to gosh, don't know you guys. Um, but you know, we didn't have a huge pepper harvest. They were in pots. So those, these little ones are from the garden. These I pulled out of the freezer because I'm not quite sure this is going to make exactly how much I need. So these will supplement it. Okay. Isn't that festive? Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. All in all, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need one cup of yellow, one cup of orange, one cup of red, and a quarter cup of your spicy peppers. So I'm hoping these guys equal a quarter cup. If not, it's not going to be as hot as I would like, but it's going to be as hot as it is. <laughs> okay? And if these don't equal to a cup each, then I will supplement with the frozen sweet peppers that I had stored in my freezer. I love making this jam so much. Let me switch you over here. Um, this is just one of those things that so many people enjoy. It's really good and it's really super easy. So you just cut it. A good sharp knife is very helpful. Okay, and then you just want to dice it into smaller pieces. There we go. You could put these in a food processor if you were so inclined. Um, if not, just dice them up. Not a big thing either way, it's not real particular. Now I am putting these into my processor uh, just because that way I can measure them. And because initially I was going to use the processor, but you know, that might just be more dishes than I'm willing to do today. So like I was saying, this is a fabulous gift. You can make cute gift tags with it. Um, take it to parties as a hostess gift with some cream cheese and some nice gourmet crackers. Mm-hmm. You will be the hit of the party, I'm telling you. Take this everywhere. Everybody, everybody loves pepper jam. Okay, somebody's going to say, I don't like pepper jam, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But it's good. It's really good. Okay, let me get these all chopped up. And I'm going to come back to these. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to cut up all this and put it in there, too. Waste not, want not. We're going to use as much of this pepper as we can to get to those three cups worth of peppers. Now, obviously, <laughs> I mean, you can mix up these colors as much as you want. This is Festival Jam because it has so many great colors in it. I love bell peppers. I love peppers. They are so colorful and so pretty, and they always make a dish look spectacular. Okay? You can dice these as fine or as thick as you want. I kind of think they are better in the jam when they're diced a little finer. So that again is up to your discretion. This is this is exactly that customizable. Okay, put in the colors that you like, chunk it to the size that you like, but it should be relatively small. Okay, I'll be back when they're all done. Okay, I did not need any of the frozen bell peppers, so those are going to go back in. My peppers from my quasi garden are going to go in here too. So I figure with, I'm at over four cups in here, but that's with the center chopper thing in there. Um, I had that in there because originally, like I said, I was going to put uh, them into the food processor, but I decided to do it by hand. You can absolutely do it with the food processor. My thought here is that I kind of want slightly larger chunks, okay, so that they're visible and it's just pretty. You're going to cook them, so they're not going to be hard. They're not going to be tough, you know, they're going to be really good. But for these hot ones, I do want to cut these up pretty well. There we go. 
because they're for the flavor. Am I taking out the seeds? No, I'm not taking out the seeds. Not at all. And I should be wearing gloves, but I'm not. So I took out the seeds of the bell peppers, but for the hot peppers, I am going to leave them intact because I want that heat in this jam, okay? And depending, like if this is adaptable, if you don't like a lot of heat, take the seeds out. If you do like a lot of heat, leave them in. Add as many or leave out as many of the peppers as you want. I am going to make sure that I get some green ones in there because that will add to that phenomenal festive color. Right? Right. Okay. Garden fresh peppers. Nothing better. Can't wait for the garden next year. Look at how pretty that is. Okay. This is fantastic with lamb. This is fantastic on uh, cream cheese and crackers. This is fantastic on toast. <laughs> this is this is just good. It's just good, I tell you. Okay, I'm gonna put one more green one in there, just for good measure. And then we're going to get these into the pot with the other peppers. Remind me, don't touch your face, Lisa. Okay, I won't. Okay, let me get just to show you. Let me see if I can do that. So we are at three cups with the middle chopper out, and that is about a quarter cup of hot peppers. So you're gonna put the peppers into a pot, okay? Turn the heat up to high, and you're gonna add in one cup of apple cider vinegar and your pectin. Now, if you use box pectin, then you're gonna want one and a half packages. If you use bulk pectin, you're gonna to wanna to use six, nine tablespoons, okay? Nine tablespoons. And you're gonna stir this all together. And with that heat on high, you are going to bring it up to a boil. Once it gets to that boiling stage, you are going to leave it there for about a minute. Okay, so while that is cooking down and boiling, um, in the pot behind it, which you can't see right now, is a pot of hot water with my jars being nice and sterilized so that they are ready to rock and roll when the time comes. So when this comes up to a boil, we'll be okay. back. We brought it up to a boil. We're gonna let it sit there for about a minute for about a minute. You don't want to leave it much longer than that because you can ruin pectin by cooking it too much. But even though you can't see it because of the steam, which I apologize for, it's going to be gorgeous, you guys. Okay, so now we are going to add our sugar. Five cups of sugar. Yes, I know that's a lot of sugar. It's a festive jam, you guys. Okay, so we're going to get that all stirred in. We have not changed the temperature on the, the burner. We're going to get that all stirred in and bring it back up to a rapid boil and let that happen for about two and a half minutes, okay? And then it will be ready to put into jars. You want to kind of keep stirring it. You want to make sure it doesn't scald because burnt jelly doesn't make anybody happy. You know what I mean? Look at how pretty that's going to be. It's going to be the best looking pepper jam ever. Hello. Okay, a rolling boil is one that can't be stirred down. And this is just almost to that point. Okay, so I'm going to start my timer right now. Okay, look at her. She's really kicking in now. Definitely can't stir it down. So I'm going to let it go an extra 30 seconds from when I set the timer, because that's about how long it took to get to this point. But you got to be careful with this one. I don't have my long... Dun, 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 dun. I don't have my long spoon. 
so you know she's going to bite. You just know it. But that's okay because it will be worth it. Just keep stirring her down. Okay. And again, as you know, I'm on a coil stove, so that stays hot. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the heat and keep stirring for a little bit until it comes down. This canning element um, really puts out a serious amount of heat. So I want to make sure that I am not scorching my jam. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging. I'm going to move my pot with my water and my jars over to here. I'm going to move this onto the board and we are going to start filling some gorgeous jars. The question was asked, um, can you water bath can in your pressure canner? Absolutely you can. That's what I'm doing. Actually more convenient. If I'm doing a small batch, I'll do everything in the pot that I have the jam in. But this is gonna be gorgeous. Okay. So we are going to look at that. Doesn't it look like a party? It looks like a party. Quarter inch headspace is what you want. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna come over and do the other one. And this recipe should do six eight ounce jars. We shall see. Now imagine putting a pretty, pretty tag on these and a nice bow and giving them as gifts during the holidays. To all of your sweet and spicy friends. Okay, so we did, we filled six jars. There's a tiny bit left over that I'm sure the grandson is gonna love. So now we are going to wipe off the rims, use vinegar or water, whatever you want, um, but you wanna make sure that none of that sugary sweetness is sitting on that rim, okay? Very important, and as always, it's a great time to check to make sure that there are no chips or cracks that you might have missed when you originally pulled the jars. Now this one in particular, you'll feel it. Not always, but sometimes you'll feel it when you've got stuff on the rim. Like that one was particularly sticky. I must have, must have slushed a bunch over. So you want to be very aware of what is happening with the, the rings, okay? Or the rims. Okay, so now we're going to put our lids on. And whoop, there we go. And then we're going to put on our rings. These are going to be water bathed, okay? Finger tight. So you do want those tighter than you do than you want the tattler lids or anything like that, but not too tight. They still need room to move. And these jars are crazy, crazy hot. Can have I told you how pretty this jam is? It's a party in a jar. I'm serious. So as we get those in, we're going to put them down into the water bath so that we can make some room. Okay, finger tight. You do many of these and you won't have fingerprints left anymore for the jars. And I know, I know, eventually I will break down and buy one of those silicone half mitts. Except I seriously don't think they fit my hand right. Okay. Or those gloves. They have gloves now. Okay, there we go. So, we're going to put these in to the water bath. We're going to put the lid on top because it just comes up to a, a boil faster with the lid on it. And you don't, when it's the pressure canner that you're using as a water bath canner, well, let me show you. Let me show you. Okay, so they're in there. I left one of the empty jars in there just as a stabilizer, actually, because I'm too lazy to pull it out. So, um, that's going to come to a nice boil. And after we put the lid on, and you're going to set your timer for 10 minutes. Once the timer goes off, you leave them sit in there for another five, and then we'll be back when we pull them out. You can see the lid's on there, but it's not on there. 
She's a bubbling away. Ho, 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 ho. And we're done. Can't pull them out. You gotta wait five minutes. Okay, so five minutes has passed. We're gonna start pulling these out. Um, I realized that I had enough jam left to fill one more jar. So I ended up filling one more jar and putting it in there. I mean, look at these, you guys. They're gorgeous. They kind of make me want to put twinkle lights around them. They are just so pretty. Perfect for gift giving for just about any occasion. Okay. Whoop, there you go. Okay, so it ended up with seven pints. Let me get you in here close. There we go. Look at those. Gorgeous, gorgeous jams. Isn't that fun? I love that sound. Gorgeous jam. These are just so pretty. You can see in them, hot. These are going to be fantastic. So we're gonna let these sit overnight and uh, check the seal. If they didn't seal, they're easy enough to reprocess. Not a big deal, just grab a new lid, throw them in there, reprocess them. Um, if they don't set, you could always reprocess the jam by adding a little more pectin, but honestly, it had more than its normal amount of pectin in it anyway. Typically you put in you know, a box of pectin, six tablespoons, but we put a box and a half and or nine tablespoons. So um, this is more than enough pectin, kind of a no fail, it's gonna set and it's going to be spectacular. I hope that you guys give this a try, maybe for a gift, maybe just to keep it for yourself. Good stuff any way you look at it. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> Until the next time, be safe.